believe there are four criteria for a great team and a great player. And number one, you have to hustle. I mean hustle. That's effort. That's extra effort. You know in your heart whether or not you can fly a little faster and get there a little more, or whether you pull off. Don't pull off. Give it everything. That's the hustle part. Number two, the H is hit. This is a game of contact. They're going to hit you. You're going to hit them. There are going to be times when it hurts. You're going to have to get up and get going again. You cannot sit there and wait. Get yourself back up off the ground and go again and hit them. This is a game you cannot shy away from the contact. It is a game of hitting and contact, and you either hit or get hit. The hitters win in this game. Number three is to play with your head. And all the things we've taught you about keys and formations and how to do things, they don't mean anything unless we execute it. Be smart out there. Look for opportunities to win the game. Look for opportunities to play your position well. Look for the things they're telling you about what's going on. Did a guy move in a gap? Did the safety move over? Did the linebacker come up? Did the back tip where he's going? There are all kinds of things out there that you can spot during the game. Play the game smart. And the last one is your heart. It's right here. This is really what ties it all together. This is what gives you that never give up spirit. That never give up spirit. That everyone, every successful team and person and story in the world has always had some time when they could have given up. Some time when they could have given up and they never gave up. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a war. It's going to be 60 minutes of absolute <coughs> clash, clash, clash. Never give up. Never, 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 never give up in this game. We will accept nothing less than full <coughs> The odds were stacked against the Longhorns as they bust a college station for the season finale. Texas hadn't beaten Texas A&M since 1990. The Aggies hadn't lost a home game since 1989, a span of 31 games. And the Southwest Conference Offensive Player of the Year, James Brown, was nursing a sprained ankle. Um, before the end of the game in the locker room, um, I was fairly calm. I wasn't... You know, I riled up trying to get going. I was more anxious than anything to get on the field and get going and see how the outcome of the game was going to be and how my ankle was going to hold up and just to play the game, basically. And if that weren't enough, standing between Texas and the final outright Southwest Conference crown will be the nation's top-rated defense. But it was the Longhorn defense that wrecked the Aggies' plans of victory. The first big play was Stoney Clark's fumble-forcing hit that halted an Aggie drive at the UT-19. Then Bryant Westbrook leveled Aggie quarterback Corey Pulling on a corner blitz that jarred the ball loose. Westbrook recovered and Texas took over. Well, against a and our defense wanted to go in that game focused and ready to play because we knew it was the last Southwest Conference game. We wanted to go in there and play you know, our best game, and I think that's what really happened. You know, everybody was on top of their game, making plays that normally don't make you know, during the regular season. Um, we wanted to go in there and take their crowd out of the game. You know, we wanted to make sure our crowd was into the game. So. When I, when I made the play particularly, I wanted to make sure the crowd was into it, so I had to go over there and, you know, jack them up because the Kyle Stadium is, you know, a great stadium to play at. And if your crowd's not in, you know, it's kind of hard for you to win there. But I think our defense went in there. We played an excellent game and kept our crowd into the game. Chris Carter intercepted a pass to stall another A&M drive. Texas drew first blood late in the second quarter with Ricky Williams charging 21 yards for a touchdown. Williams coming right, gets a good block at the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown, 21 yards, Ricky Williams. And the roaring and hearing and cheering you hear is from the Texas fans on the opposite side of the field. The 8,000 or so who are making the noise as the Longhorns have cracked the scoring column, the first touchdown of the day. Nice run by Ricky Williams inside, turned outside. He also got a block. Wayne McGarity helped out on the block. And then Williams just got away from Reggie Brown and took it to the end zone. The point after touchdown was missed and Texas held a slim 6-0 halftime lead. All right, here we go. Now listen, we're going to take the ball in the third quarter. They're going to take the win. That's all right. We're going to have to play one to two quarters anyway. Play it hard. Play it well. Offense, don't take the third quarter as they will play it hard and run the time. We want to score in the third quarter. We want to score at least once and maybe twice. We've got a good read on what we want to do. 
Defense, keep guard. Now remember when they're in that ice, <coughs> don't give up on uh, Lee McElroy running that draw. They are a defensive-minded team, and they come back to that a lot of times. So don't run past the draw on the way to the quarterback. Keep after it. Keep after it. And keep making his bad balls. Get the bats. Knock them down. You're playing a great game. Everybody's playing a great game, but it's only half over. Yeah, baby. It's only baby. half over. And I want to tell you something. It's just like someone told the story. There are two kinds of football players on that field. Two kinds. And those are dead, and those are going to be dead. And if you don't want to be dead, get out there and get going. And that's exactly what we're talking about. If you want to be the champions, want to be the champion, someone's going to walk off that field and feel great here in about an hour. Someone's going to walk off that field and say, we are the champions. It's got to be us. No matter what we get in the first half, sure. be smart. We made a couple mistakes, wipe them off, learn from them, and let's go. 30 minutes, we're talking about your history, we're talking about everything, we're talking about freedom. Oh, baby, you're free. No, baby. Go. Go. Jason Reeves' interception halted the Aggies' first drive of the second half. And a series of defensive stands inside the 10 forced a and to settle for a field goal late in the third quarter. Ricky Williams dashed 44 yards to get the Longhorns moving. The 25-30, cuts right. Ricky Williams is at the 35-40. Ricky Williams down the right sideline, 50. He's at the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Good hard run by Ricky Williams for 44 yards. Mike Adams made a spectacular third down catch to move the ball to the A&M 18. Two plays later, Williams rumbled 17 yards to the Aggie one. Then on third down, Williams easily scored to make it 13 to three. A&M tacked on an early fourth quarter field goal for a 13 to six score. Then Mike Adams made another amazing third down catch to keep the Horns next drive alive. And Texas upped its advantage to 16 to six on a Phil Dawson 26 yard field goal. Tony Bracken's blindsided Corey Pulling to force a turnover, and Chris Carter's late fourth quarter interception sealed the victory and the final Southwest Conference Championship for the Longhorns. It was a day of heroics, as James Brown continually lifted himself off the carpet with a bruised and battered ankle to lead the Longhorn offense. And the 163-yard effort by Ricky Williams pushed him past Earl Campbell as the Longhorns' all-time freshman rushing leader. The a game was a lot of fun for me. I had a you know, real good game, and uh, I'd worked really hard the whole week in practice because I knew I wanted to break Earl Campbell's record and maybe reach 1,000 yards. And also, it's, you know, it's a humongous rivalry, and the whole town wanted us to go out there and beat them. We needed to do that because it's been so long since we've won. So uh, I went out there, you know, I had kind of a slow first half, and then started picking up a little bit more in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. And it just felt great to have such a good game to win the conference. But it was the Longhorn defense that once again shined, this time forcing six turnovers and holding its second opponent in the final three games out of the end zone. Texas' dramatic championship run, which included victories over the top three Southwest Conference contenders in the final five games, was complete. When this shit gets a and I mean, the win was exciting, um, but it really was, it was more personal for me. Um, they beat us on our field last year, and. They cut our horns off our beaver on the field, and you know they danced on our field and everything. And you know, after you lose and you go in the locker room and other teams out there doing it on your field, you know it really hurts. Um, so it was like um, it wasn't revenge; it was just more getting back at them, you know, just for things they said about us and our team and what we couldn't do in our program. It just builds up, and I'm glad we beat them. The Longhorns had reached the summit, claimed the final Southwest Conference championship and successfully accomplished each of its season goals. They were free at last and set to earn a spot as one of only six programs in a tier one bowl game. When you talk about great college rivalries, Texas, Texas A&M has to be one of the very best and one of the longest actually uh, in all of college football. For us, it meant so much more than that because we hadn't beaten them in the three previous years that I'd been here and of course, 
They had a 31 game home winning streak. There were so many things built up in the game. And for the first time in so many years, this game meant more than just going to the Cotton Bowl. It meant going into this new bowl alliance, something that was like a final four of basketball. It was, it was different, it was special. It had an excitement to it above and beyond maybe any of the other games. And of course, the way we played and the way we had to go and win with James Brown not 100% and with our defense playing so spectacularly on every uh, cylinder, hitting on every cylinder, and the run game, to be able to run the ball and control the game with our run game the way we did. I think uh, most people could not ever have expected that to happen. To me, those were the significant parts of the football game. And when we won that game, it was, it was like uh, we had really accomplished what we set out to accomplish this year. Uh, we had accomplished every one of our team goals for the season, and I think we were very satisfied that we had, in fact, climbed to the top of the mountain for 1995. In the Nokia Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, the Longhorns faced a dominant Virginia Tech Hokie defense. But their 28-10 loss could not dull the shining season, a season that culminated in a series of memorable moments as Texas surged back into the national spotlight in 1995. With their Nokia Sugar Bowl appearance, the Longhorns earned their first back-to-back -back bowl bids in 11 years and a final number 14 national ranking. It was an historic year in the 103rd season of Texas football as the Steers closed out the final chapter of Southwest Conference football with an outright league title. Fueled by one of the most balanced and explosive offenses in the 82 years of the conference and a rapidly improving defense, Texas finished undefeated in league play and secured back-to-back -back league crowns for the first time in 23 years. Although the University of Texas Longhorns look fondly upon the accomplishments of the past, they have accepted the challenge of a new conference and strive to establish a renewed tradition of excellence in the Big 12 and beyond. Attention Longhorn fans, have paper and pencil ready, you can order these Longhorn products by phone. Like these Hanes PPTs, there are seven logo designs to choose from, all white with orange print and come in all sizes, just $6.95 each. Display your Longhorn pride with one of these BOA sportswear baseball jerseys. They come in assorted colors and sizes, just $34.95 each. Look good and stay warm in this Dunbrook Distance Images jacket. Texas Longhorns is embroidered on the left chest. It's only $69.95 and is available in medium, large, and extra large. Show your Longhorn pride this winter with an exclusive custom-designed Longhorn leather jacket. It's fully lined, has burnt orange sleeves, and displays Texas Longhorns on the chest and is priced at just $450. And for a little Longhorn, a 3rd Street sweatsuit or 3rd Street fleece 